Good day everyone and welcome to another shader update. Today we get to talk about version 5. This update includes the older ones, re-added to 2.8 since some major changes that took place broke their compatibility, as well as a set of 4 newer shaders. The old ones have been discussed before, so for those you can check out the older videos in the description on how to use them. In this video we will focus only on the latest two. Why only the latest two? Well, because they are the same as the two I included in version 4, and quite frankly they only have sharpness control added. With that said, let's get into it. I was led to attempt to build a new shader that did not need to use the driver method. This does mean that we don't have multiple models for diffuse. The same for specularity. These are solely based on the diffuse BSDF and the glossy BSDF. Note that this is a very very good thing as it makes the shader much more predictable. I've been told that a modular design would be better than a super shader or uber shader and honestly I totally agree. With a lot of the tune stuff I do, I don't use specularity, so why does it have to be calculated? It doesn't make any sense. It just wastes ridiculous amounts of computing power for something that is literally not there. So what do we get here for the diffuse? We have color, we have color intensity, we have size, we have step intensity, step sharpness, roughness, and normal. And of course we always have that two-step shading option as well. I do want to work on the oversensitivity that the sharpness tends to exhibit because I do believe it can be a little less crazy to deal with. The reason it is so sensitive is because it works with a brightness and contrast node. In Blender, brightness and contrast works very differently from your typical image manipulation programs such as Photoshop or GIMP. Brightness contains elements of contrast and contrast contains elements of brightness. This mix means that when you start adjusting sharpness, it can increase or decrease the step size rapidly as well, so keep that in mind as you adjust. I specifically chose the defaults as they are to make sure that working from this is as simple as can be with minimal adjustments. If you can keep everything visible on the material, you can deal with it much more easily. Do note there is a major, major drawback with these shaders. These new ones work with brightness and not with color. The colors are separated from the actual shading, so we can use a flat gray or white shader as our base to control the shading. This means we cannot input a gray texture and expect it to just work, since that would be brightness information. To remedy this, simply use a dark color for black and a shader to RGB node to convert the result back to black and white. I did that for the knight's armor and it looks awesome. Of course the same goes for specularity. Speaking of, for the specularity shader we have color, size, sharpness, roughness and normal. These respond basically the same as with a diffuse, so controlling the values should be even easier because we have less to work with. <laughs> Just remember that specularity is not the same as diffuse and changes as your angle changes. So handle roughness with low values and let sharpness and size determine the size of the specularity. Only, and I mean only use roughness to control it as a last resort. The reason for this is that the rougher the surface gets, the more it responds like diffuse. Just think of how light responds to a matte chrome finish. And that's it. You can mix these of course with the other shaders that are compatible with Eevee and create your own NPR materials in whatever style you prefer. And, and this is a very big and, and since these values are variable, they can also be textured. How cool is that? So go be creative and have fun with these. Have a great one and God bless you.